Tonight um, is a workshop on how to Instagram. Um, and the idea is for every one of you to be able to explore uh, the different side of Instagram photography. And for that, we gathered three amazing Instagram photographers. I should actually say three photographers using Instagram as um, one of their storytelling tools. Um, and they will share with you not only their story, but their tips and tricks in a presentation. And then the idea is uh, to discuss with them um, how they grew their following, how they tell their story, um, how they can monetize their Instagram fame, um, and that's going to be in the Q&A session. Last but not, not least, and this is really an experiment, because um, this is the first time we, we, are, we are doing it, uh, we want to do at the, at the end of the session something like a feed review. Um, that would be the Instagram equivalent of a, of a portfolio review. Um, and the idea is to, to take three to five volunteers um, that submit their Instagram feed to, to, to our uh, uh, panelists um, and, and hear uh, their feedback, criticism, suggestions, and ideas on how to improve um, their feed. Um, so, if you want to submit uh, uh, your feed, uh, you can do it now uh, or um, after the Q&A session. Um, so, voila, that, that was the short introduction. Uh, let me now quickly present the, the three speakers um, in order of uh, chronological appearance. Um, the first one is uh, Anka Itkovic. I hope I, I pronounced your name right. Um, very quickly, uh, Anka began her career as a stylist in extremely well-known magazines uh, such as uh, Harper's Bazaar and uh, Interview uh, magazine. Th she then worked for Marie Claire, and, and, um, and in 2013, she launched this extremely successful street-style project uh, through Instagram called The Lineup, um, and that's what uh, She's going to share with us tonight how she captures some of New York's best dressed uh, um, people in their native habitat. Uh, she has now 85,000 followers. Um, the second speaker that we're uh, happy to welcome tonight is, is Mickey Mick. Um, Mickey worked as an online producer and editor uh, for outlets such as National Geographic and the New York Times. Uh, since uh, 2012, the end of 2012, she joined uh, the staff of uh, The American Life. Um, and uh, I must add that Miki has won two Emmy Awards for her new approaches on documentary programming. Um, last but not least, uh, we welcome tonight Dave Krugman, uh, who is a Brooklyn-based uh, uh, creative, creative with a mind for, for building community. Um, amazing Instagram photographer, he is at the origin of uh, the empty uh, museum movement. He's now the social editor for the creative department at BBDO New York. Um, that was it for my introduction. Anka, I leave it up to you. So uh, my name is Anka and I run uh, an Instagram called The Lineup. Um, I, um, Fell in love with Instagram on, uh, and I knew I remember the date. It was March 31st, 2013. And why I remember the date is because um, a couple of weeks before that, I went to see uh, my doctor, who very sternly advised me to stop smoking. And uh, for days after that, I kind of ra just was uh, terrified to to see what uh, how I could substitute to see how I could substitute uh, one really dreadful habit uh, with a more positive one. And, uh, um, and I have to tell you, I've, I've lived in the East Village for nearly three decades, and I've uh, uh, done street style photography or street photography for a very long time, and I've shared it with friends, I've shown it to editors, I've uh, made books, and it simply just never went anywhere. So, um, on March 31st, I had a kind of an, an aha moment. I knew what I was going to do. And I've been pretty much uh, posting every single day since then. Uh, 
to tell you a little bit, of, uh, or to actually even backtrack, um, Instagram uh, uh, gave me independence uh, from uh, magazines or publishing houses. I found an independent format in which I can uh, post my work. And uh, that freedom has been just a, 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 a love affair since that day. Um, to tell you a little bit about myself, I work as a fashion stylist. I'm a freelancer. I, um, I mainly work on fashion advertising shoots. Um, I have a specialty. It, it is intimate apparel, uh, intimate apparel, apparel uh, or swimwear. If you've ever bought a pair of Calvin Klein underwear, I most likely worked on that image and that packaging. A great, a great specialty, I have to admit. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, about the lineup, uh, what the lineup is about is strong, spirited people. It is about real people with true personal style. Uh, and what I love to focus on is uh, the, uh, and you know, street style has become uh, a bit of an industry in the last few years. So, what I focus on is uh, the real, the, the street in street style is, is what fascinates me. And of course, um, originality and creativity and this kind of sass, uh, this fearlessness uh, uh, of the subjects that I uh, come across. Um, and of course, what is really just um, uh, brings me so much joy is diversity. Uh, we are so blessed to, to experience such a rainbow of diversity in New York City. Um, it is, it's, I, I just, uh, I'm madly in love and passionate uh, uh, with uh, the subjects I shoot. Um, I also love uh, focusing on friends. I, I find it amazing how we mirror each other uh, when we find our tribe. I love photographing couples. Uh, we very much uh, mirror our uh, romantic partners. And uh, when I photograph couples, it's, um, you know, there's this uh, wonderful intimacy uh, that comes through and, and tenderness and sweetness uh, in, this, in, the, in the space uh, of uh, those very few minutes that we spend together. Uh, and of course, a, a bit of humor comes through quite often. Uh, and again, diversity, uh, you know, in, in um, colors and sexual orientation. Uh, it, it's I, I'm, it's very joyful to me. I'm a very passionate New Yorker, um, as well. I know, right? Um, twins. Um, you know, I, I wish I came across more identical twins. And again, it's very, and especially yesterday, as there were so many uh, tributes to Mary Ellen Mark, and I had a chance to look through her uh, twins' work, and I, I, I had a an insight into how she must have felt as she was working on the project. And uh, there is something really magical. We, we always joke about uh, you know, how, how well they speak, tele uh, speak telepathy. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it, there's something just magical uh, that happens with mirroring of identity. Um, I also love to photograph um, uh, the skateboarding culture. Uh, just such panache, such fearlessness, such spirit, uh, great style, of course. Uh, but you know, uh, uh, the uh, the well, I'll, I'll stay here. Uh, of course, I love um, uh, photographing um, dogs and their owners uh, because, again, uh, we we very much uh, resemble uh, our owners. Uh, pets resemble their owners, and vice versa. Owners resemble their pets. Um, uh, and, and again, it offer, these moments uh, offer so much um, warmth and humor. And again, Instagram is a very uh, wonderful place for animals. They really uh, give a lot of space and attention to animals. So it's, it's a, and people respond uh, to animals in the most marvelous of ways. Um, uh, but w in the end, I have to, as I've re uh, reflected on even preparing to, uh, tonight's uh, conversation, is what, uh, it appears that I am interested in style, but what I'm really, truly fascinated by is um, self-esteem in, in my subjects. So um, 
Uh, here I want to talk a little bit about uh, how I go about finding the subjects um, for these uh, images. Um, I just walk around and uh, I've developed what's called uh, a radar vision. So, um, uh, for example, with this young lady, I saw her maybe m a block away, and then I just run after her. I, I usually don't uh, uh, sneak up on anybody from behind. I, I come around, and I, I have my phone in my hand, and so, for example, with her, I, ran, I saw her at Elizabeth Street in Houston, uh, and when I caught up with her, I already had my phone in my hand and I made an introduction. I said, you look fantastic. I'm doing this Instagram project. I would love to take a picture of you. And because I primarily work with street culture, um, I would say 99.99999% of people uh, know the template of Instagram. So when um, they, they see uh, what is asked of them, 99.999% say yes. So uh, I've chosen my project to be uh, 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 using uh, backdrops of, of street walls. And in New York City, uh, there's an abundance of bricks and graffiti and, and metal gratings. So uh, with this uh, young beauty, we simply uh, walked around the corner on Elizabeth Street. There was this perfect graphic brick. Uh, we um, literally, uh, I asked most of my subjects to engage with me and look me in the eye, and via me, look at the viewer. Uh, it makes it for a very uh, intimate experience. And uh, um, I only take about 10, and I work with my phone. I shoot with my cell phone, uh, which is a marvelous tool. Uh, and uh, um, as soon as we were done taking our 10, 15 frames, which really only takes about a minute, um, I do uh, uh, what I believe is a very important step. I take all of their, my subject's information. So I write down uh, her name, I would write down her Instagram handle, and I would write down her um, email. I've been advised time and time again uh, by people, um, by professionals, to, t uh, to uh, have the, the model sign releases. And I, you know, it's very challenging for me to say, hi, how are you? Uh, let me take a picture of you, you look great. Here, sign a legal document. So uh, what I do instead is I collect emails. Um, uh, oh, halfway through uh, the project, about a first year in, I realized that, uh, because I only used to take their Instagram handles, I realized that if a person changes name, they disappear, unless you're following them. But if, if, they ch if you're not following them, if they change their name, you will never find them again. So I take uh, emails. And uh, as I take their emails, I preface it and say, you know, I only take it if I ever will need uh, your permission for anything. And, and, and most people have no issue whatsoever in uh, giving their emails. So if you, so my recommendation would be to always, if you take a picture of somebody, use their handle, so that way it becomes an interactive experience. And if you are reposting an image from someone, use their handle. Uh, or, you know, now there's a billion uh, repost apps, so it, it, that way uh, we, we stay a community, we interact with each other much more, with much more respect. Um, so this is a very uh, important aspect of uh, my Instagram identity. Uh, it is what I call my landing page. Uh, and uh, I take very, um, I, I pay very uh, uh, strict attention to it. Um, I don't subscribe to the Insta in Instagram. I, uh, I shoot, I go home, I download everything, and I look at the layout. Um, I, it's really, uh, uh, it's, it's an important step for me because it is my identity after all, my visual identity. Uh, uh, so um, I am um, very much in love with the square format. It, it's a very effective format for uh, the type of work that I do. And I really uh, think that it's, uh, um, the, I, I love the moving of the squares as well, the fluidity of the squares. They really help to tell a story. Uh, so, for example, in this uh, uh, the the in this image, uh, the bottom three are the sort of the the hard punk rockers. Uh, then the story moves into 
headwear. Then the story moves into tattoos and florals. And then the last four, they're sort of the more sophisticated bunch. So it, it, by its own nature, by its fluidity, it allows me to tell uh, a story. Uh, and also, um, I'm kind of a very, uh, I have a very structured brain only for very few things, but uh, 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 I, I pay attention to the dark and the light. So uh, in the three, in the three squares, I, I find it's very effective if you one stays dark, light, dark, or differently, light, dark, light. So if you'll see on the top left, I kind of fudged it a little bit. There's two very light squares over each other, and it's not the most effective uh, graphic uh, way to treat this template. But um, I also can't obsess about it because of its fluidity. Eventually, it'll simply move down the page. So it's a, it's a, um, uh, it's a very important uh, identity of of you uh, in the uh, in the digital world. It's you're 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 showing your work in a in a glance, basically. So, and the graphics of it are important, I think. Uh, video, um, I. Um, I am fascinated by video. I'll let you listen. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> he cracks me up every time. Uh, uh, the the I've in introduced video very very slowly and. And it is a format that I still need to work on and explore. If somebody asks me, what, where do you see yourself in a couple of years, I would say working more in video. And as we can see, especially with the introduction of uh, new platforms that are specifically working in video, it's where I think everything is going, moving towards. And especially in the last couple of months, I've uh, worked uh, for some, in, in, in styling, work for some brands lately, and um, where we used to do a couple of shoots a year and then the big commercial. That's pretty much, unless the brand is very wealthy, that's disappeared. What, what happens now is the day is spent on um, YouTube videos for the brand. Uh, so video is quite important. Um, uh, uh, twins again, uh, but this image was chosen by Instagram uh, of, for their blog. And on the blog, um, you know, what happens when they feature you, it's uh, you, you get tons of followers, uh, you know, subscribe to your feed. Uh, but the thing is that followers don't really, you know, they're fickle. They stay, they go, they, they, they move, basically. So I, I don't really get attached so much to the numbers. I just really kind of uh, try to focus on the content uh, that I, I pr offer up every single day. And, and here I also wanted to uh, uh, bring up and a very important point is the, um, the, uh, the culture of likes. I think it's really important to, if you follow people, to like their work, to make comments, to engage, and if people make comments, to answer back. Um, this uh, is one of my most favorite uh, New Yorker cartoons. It's also one of the top questions that people tend to ask me. Um, I have to say that a uh, question used to bring on a tremendous amount of anxiety uh, until I had lunch with a very savvy and wise uh, friend who works in digital content. And she said, you know, maybe I shouldn't so much focus on the monetizing part of it. Uh, maybe I should look at my Instagram feed as an elevated calling card. And ever since I've heard that advice, the anxiety has dissipated. And um, I, I feel like I've, with Instagram, I've been rebranded uh, personally, professionally, uh, and, and certainly uh, communally. So, uh, so, but having said that, the first project that came uh, editorial, uh, fashion project that uh, came through was uh, Vogue.com, uh, and they asked me to uh, uh, shoot their um, uh, New York Fashion Week for them. So that was a wonderful treat, and these are just a few images that I worked for on them. And uh, lastly, I'll say that instead of monetizing, I, I, I'm open to collaborations, and this was a part of a project I just did very recently with uh, uh, a brand called Heisel, who is uh, mixing technology and fashion. 
And uh, it was very much in the spirit of the lineup. So, um, you know, monetizing uh, in, in the richness of collaborative efforts. And um, this is really, I, I you know, uh, Instagram's credo, I don't know whether it's official or unofficial, is community first. So um, I found my tribe. I, I kind of, I, I love them. So thanks so much. Hi, um, my name is Miki Meek, and thanks so much for coming out tonight. Um, I just wanted to give you just a little bit of background about me. It just, can you, can you hear me okay, or is it, is it, is it off? Is it better? Can you hear me a little bit better now? Okay, even closer. I, sh I work in radio, so I should, I, should, I should know this, but I'm a little bit shy. Okay, um, so anyways, I just wanted to just kind of start from the beginning. Um, you know, I started using Instagram probably back in April 2011, and this is the very first picture that I posted. It's kind of a test photo. I was sitting in a parking lot in Oregon, you know, waiting for someone, just looking out at a lake and some clouds, and I'd heard about Instagram, but I didn't really know what it was. Um, you know, I, I heard it was something that people upload photos to. So, you know, I uploaded my picture. A couple strangers left some comments. <laughs> you know, they were encouraging. It was nice. They were like, that nice first photo, you know. And uh, I thought, this is interesting. Um, and then five days later, um, I took my next picture. I was, um, I was back in New York. And um, it was morning rush hour, and I was standing on a subway. Um, and, you know, when I look at this photo now, it's, it's a pretty t terrible photo. It's really yellow. The lines aren't straight. But... You know, as I was standing there, I just I saw this kid, and I kind of just fell in love with him for a second. You know, it's like for a moment, he, I felt like I got to capture him and like in his own little world for a minute. And that feeling was really exciting to me, just the fact that I was going about my normal day, and you know, you could see these moments and um, and you could capture them. And I think that feeling really stuck with me. Um, and so I think after that, I just kind of went nuts. You know, I started taking pictures um, everywhere I went before and after work. Um, so, you know, like one evening I was walking through Washington Square Park on my way home and I saw this guy who I thought was really beautiful, you know, he was just hanging out on a park bench and these pigeons were hanging out on him. Um, and then, you know, one Saturday I walked out of my apartment and I saw this girl standing there. She was with a big group of her friends and it was her quinceanera. Um, and so I was just looking for pictures. I mean, I originally just started looking for pictures for things that were already happening around me. I wasn't necessarily going out and seeking photos. I was just going about my day, and if I saw something, I would stop. Um, but it definitely just kind of, you know, like Anik, like you said, your, your eyes kind of, you know, they, they go into this very specific mode that actually just made my days much more interesting. Um, and then, you know, after that, I remember just like one morning, like waking up and looking outside my window after a big snowstorm and, you know, some plowed truck driver must have been having a really awesome time and left these, <laughs> left these great tracks, you know? Um, and then this next one is I was actually just heading home um, on New Year's Eve and just standing on the G, G train after midnight and saw this couple. And actually after I took this picture, you know, I introduced myself and, and emailed it to them. And that, that's something I've kind of tried to make a habit of. I don't necessarily always ask people right before. I, I'm definitely kind of a more quiet observer, but after I've taken their picture, I usually like to try to share it with them. Um, and so, you know, like looking back at these photos style-wise, they're, they're kind of like all over the place. You know, I'm using all these different filters and borders and vignettes, like they're stuff that I wouldn't really use now. Um, they're, they're, I tend to now use stuff that's much more natural looking. But just looking back at this, I sort of see this as a pretty important time for me just because I was having so much and fun just like enjoying the medium that I wasn't, I felt like I had, um, I could kind of try out anything, you know, just kind of work things out. Um, and I wasn't so worried about um, being self-conscious about that. You know, it was just so separate from what my work life was. And I also just, like, the community on Instagram is so positive, too, that I think it kind of, like, it encourages that. Um, and so over that time, you know, that process of constantly just, like, looking for pictures and places where I already was, you know, just pretty everyday, normal things, um, like, I did start to feel like I started to get better at spotting moments faster and quicker um, and just being able to anticipate, you know, um, wait for someone to get in their, uh, you know, their head to move a certain way or their body to move a certain way. Um, and another thing that really helped is that I just also just got in the habit of editing my pictures pretty quickly. I, Annika takes her time, but I'm someone, like, at the 
you know, within an hour or 30 minutes of taking a picture, um, I pretty much just sit down and make myself look at them um, and pick one. Just so it sticks in my brain in terms of like what was working and not working and just starting to internalize, you know, like what makes a good picture? What do I want to try to remember the next time I'm in a, I'm in a setting? Um, this is just like from my backyard again, just woke up and saw the snow and thought these two chairs were kind of funny. Um, this is just uh, Washington Square Park. I know, I, I loved it, I love this couple. <laughs> it's like definitely just like su summer love. Um, this is just a kid walking across, uh, this is on the Upper East Side, very very Harry Potter. Um, and this is just actually, just in the winter I was biking by here, and this is a uh, Bushwick Inlet Park, so it's just, you know, looking at it sort of from Greenpoint, and I just thought it was kind of this, looked like this very kind of funny wooded view, even though you're in New York City. Um, and this is just a woman in Madison Square Park who's just out sunning. Actually, I mean, she's not even in the park, she's just like standing on the side, sitting on the sidewalk, and there's like so much joy. I know I also love, love later, you know, I saw these legs up in the trees. I mean, I do tend to think when I photograph, I'm not so much always looking at everything its entirety, you know, I didn't know those legs were there. I usually am just like looking for someone in a moment. You know, I take pictures on my phone, just, you know, shoot full frame. I think afterwards I tend to edit more in terms of, you know, what, what do I want the composition to, to be? But I think the primary thing that makes me connect is I'm just like looking for that, that moment. Um, this is a guy who lives in my neighborhood who wears these fantastic white white suits. Um, and the woman, a woman on the High Line, um, just I don't know, just liked how weird her foot was kind of tilted next to those flowers. Um, so you know, I stuck to photographing a lot of these street scenes in New York for a couple of years, like probably until about 2013, and then I started branching out. And a lot of that had to do with just a shift that was kind of happening in my life. Um, I grew up out west. I spent, you know, my dad spent a lot of time taking our families outdoors. You know, we were always camping and hiking and swimming and living in New York. I just hadn't been doing a lot of that. Um, and I think I just hit a point where I wanted to, I started to prioritize that. Um, so let me just start this. So, you know, I just kind of started, um, I just started doing whatever I could to get upstate on the weekends or out to the beaches. Um, I also started going out back west a lot. And so since that's what I happened to be doing in my life at the time, then that's what I started, that's what I photographed. And, you know, ideally I always tried to find places that were, you know, beautiful or quiet, or, you know, secluded, you know, ideally with friends or family. Um, and, uh, and that seems to be the period when I started picking up a lot of followers um, for whatever reason, you know. Um, Instagram did, during this time, sort of put me on their suggested user list twice. Um, and then the New York Times Magazine ended up publishing a, um, an excerpt of my photos over a year. You know, they wanted to know every place I'd been for, for the past year, and so they kind of did a one-year travel diary. Um, and so for that, that was, that was nice. You know, I was able to pick up photo assignment fees for that. Um, and then after that, I, you know, yeah, this, this is actually from my hometown. <laughs> um, I was just up the canyon one day driving and saw that guy. Um, and then, you know, after that, I felt like just more and more started happening. You know, I got picked up to be in a photo festival on cell phone photography um, in Italy last year. And then this year I'll be in another uh, um, show on cell phone work in Charlottesville. It's this really great festival that, that happens in a couple of weeks called Look 3. Um, so, you know, so for whatever reason, just doing the thing that I like doing, being outside, being somewhere beautiful, you know, it seemed to really resonate with people. And I think the thing that's been the biggest benefit for me is that I started meeting a lot of other Instagram users, like people started giving me great tips when I was at places. Um, I became friends with some of those people and actually like last summer there was a couple where we actually like spent, they showed me the most awesome swimming holes like all over New York, so I actually like some of them became real friends. Um, these are these guys, they took me here. It's an old gunpowder factory outside of Pennsylvania. Um, and then, you know, I also, like, a, a group of photographers reached out to me. Um, they formed this feed called Everyday USA on Instagram. And so, basically, their idea is, you know, they're like, we just kind of want to reach out to a bunch of people who live all over the country um, and have, like, very different interests and in some way try to provide a collective view of what, you know, of the U.S. And um, they have been able to, like, pick up projects. I didn't participate in this last one, but, like, Time Magazine hired them to shoot something for Veterans Day. Um, you know, shoot stuff from all over the country. So I don't know, so that's been kind of pretty exciting to see. Um, and then, you know, one thing I was asked about was just to think about tips, like any tips that I would give you guys. And I think the biggest one is just to photograph the things that you enjoy or you're interested in or that you have access to. Um, 
I think for me, Instagram has sort of worked out in some pretty surprising ways, like ways I didn't expect to at all, just because it, you know, I, I primarily looked at it as this creative space to try out things. Um, and then it you know, also just became this really important record of things that were going on in my life. So, um, so I don't know, I, I don't tend to think that much about followers. I think if I did, it might cripple me a little bit in terms of, you know, I'm like, I just primarily try to keep in my head, you know, I wanna photograph what it is that I'm interested in, what, what I'm doing. Um, I have been offered to photograph for a couple ads and I, I feel, have, feel complicated about that. You know, it'd be nice to monetize it. But I think right now I'm still kind of on the side of, I'm like, it's this very specific space and thing for me where I'm only photographing things that I want to that are happening in my life. And that feels separate from that. Maybe at some point I'll be, I'll want to do that, but that's kind of not what it is for me. It's, it's, it's about making good pictures and seeing things and that that's where my enjoyment comes from. Um, and then I think the other tip I would give is just to constantly be looking at other people's pictures, other feeds, other photographers, photographers that you really like, and just really making yourself stop on their photos for a second and, and run through those questions of like, why do I like this photo? You know, why is it a good photo? Um, and I think doing that will sort of help you internalize after a while. Um, you know, like you'll start to subconsciously uh, start to recognize some of that just when you're out taking your own pictures. Um, so I don't know if that, that, that's, my, that's my presentation. So thanks so much for your time. So, you know, much like uh, the last two presenters, um, I kind of just downloaded Instagram because I was super into photography. And it wasn't until I had an experience at uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art that I realized the potential uh, for it to be a larger communications tool. Um, I was walking through the galleries and I noticed that, you know, almost every single person that I was looking at had their phone out. And they were looking at the art through their phone, you know, the art, the, the visuals were going through, through their camera phone onto their screen and then they were looking at it and I thought, you know, that's such a shame that they can't just enjoy the art. But it wasn't about, um, you know, being on social media or, or anything like that. It, I realized that they were actually engaging in, in the space and in the visual art in, in kind of an entirely new way, where they weren't just bringing themselves and their families to see this stuff. They were actually bringing anybody who was connected to them uh, through their social media networks. So in a way, this, this app, it wasn't really distracting people. It was breaking down the physical boundaries um, and allowing people, you know, anybody with a, a network connection throughout the entire world could now see what they might not have seen before. And maybe somebody will never get the opportunity to travel to an institution like this, but they can experience that art. They can, they can have the museum in their pocket. So I got together with um, Taylor Newby, who runs the account Met Museum. Um, and he is the guy, he's doing a great job leading the uh, Met Museum Instagram account. I'd recommend you check it out. It's really like having, you know, the whole collection in your pocket. Um, and we, I, I wanted to find a way to take all these people that were, you know, uploading to Instagram anyway. How can we give them a hub to share their experience? Um, and how can the museum, you know, harness that, the power of that network to, um, you know, promote art and to, to open their doors to even more people. Um, so we, together we came up with this plan, let's bring highly followed photographers in and we'll give them private tours so they can photograph the spaces when there's nobody else there, which is actually a completely different experience. Um, and it's one of those situations that we kind of found a symbiosis, right? So we didn't need a budget because these photographers um, were, you know, really, really happy to get this access to the, to the museum. The museum didn't have the money uh, budgeted to do a lot of social media because this was three years ago. Um, so what they could offer was an incentive, which is to um, open their doors and then they would trade that uh, access for exposure on social media. So this is a really, really simplified version of what we did, but we took people like New York City who has, um, my friend Liz, who has, I think she has like 1.3 million followers on Instagram. He said, we're gonna get a group together and we'd love to give you two hours, you know, you can go photograph whatever you want, there's not gonna be anybody else there, uh, and we'd love to see what you can create. And all that we ask is that, that you share this stuff out and you tag the museum. So we repeated this, you know, over and over and uh, it, it proved to be pretty successful. Um, people were really excited to see these spaces like they had never seen before. I mean, even if you go to the Met, 
Um, I don't know if you've been recently, but I, when I go during the day now, um, it's, it's unbelievably crowded. It's really hard to experience the, the grand spaces in the way that um, you get to when it's closed. So we repeated this you know, a lot of times. I got to photograph the, uh, the space, I don't know, over 12 times now um, with small groups of photographers. This is Jimmy Chin. I don't know if any of you know him. He's a National Nat Geo guy. Um, extremely talented athlete and photographer. Um, so we, we would rotate people through um, whenever we could. So this, is, this was kind of like started as, as a passion project. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so you know, we'd come in, we'd, we always like to take group shots and just kind of uh, share the spaces and, that I think, you know, you get views that you can't really get. Normally the staircase would be just completely filled with people and it's it's nice to not lose those leading lines. Um, so, yeah, here's another space. This is in the, in the temple of uh, Dender. So we repeated this, you know, a lot. Instagram, uh, you know, like, like Miki was saying, like Miki was saying, um, got put on the suggested user list because I think they, they liked this, this project and, and what we were trying to do. Um, the, the Mets page also got put on the suggested user list, which helped give it a little more attention. And then I was at another event, um, which was an Esquire, kind of, they opened up the Hearst building to Instagrammers to come in and, and do some photography. Um, and I met a reporter for the New York Times, and she happened to be the uh, digital media reporter. And she's, she was looking for Instagram stories. So I started talking about this project, and you know we went back and forth for, for a long time. And, and eventually, she wrote an article. Um, and the reason I bring it up is because that's when things really kind of changed um, for me and my Instagram experience. So, so this article um, came out just about almost exactly a year ago. Um, and it was a catalyst because you know, once it's in the Times, institutions all over the world started reaching out to me and saying, you know, we really, we really like this idea. Do you think you can help us? And you know, I. I can't be everywhere at once, but what I would do is I would send them, you know, the pitch information that I that I sent originally to the Met and and talk, you know, here's how you do it, he, like just the basics, like make sure you're asking the photographers to include your handle, you know, ask them if they're willing to share content with you, and just a really simple package that could just be sent anywhere in the world. And um, since you know, in the past year, I know that I've participated. I, I didn't set these up, but I've participated in events at. Um, the Guggenheim, um, you know, a lot of others, the New York Public Library, the Intrepid, uh, One World Trade Observatory, all these stuff. Um, they did one at the, uh, the Louvre. Um, a lot of institutions in Russia have been doing this. And it's, it's really funny to see, like, it'll be like a whole, somebody will send me an article and it'll be all, all in Russian and then it'll just be like, Dave Krugman. And then keep going, and I can't even understand it. I have to get Google to translate it for me. Um, but this is really what led to my current role uh, in, in, at BBDO, uh, helping to tell brand stories on this platform. Um, yeah, and if, if you want to read this article, you can just Google this. Um, it's sharing cultural jewels via Instagram. And it's, it goes a little bit more into depth about how we got started. And so in the interest of time, you can pursue that on your own. So the challenge was, you know, it's, it, seems easy for, it seems easy to tell the story of, of a visual institution like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, um, but how do you tell a story that, you know, you don't have access to one of the best collections of, of visuals in the world? Um, so this is one project that, we're, that we launched for Monster, um, and it was the idea of finding better. Uh, so the hashtag is find better, the account is Monster. What we did is we went around the country and kind of looked for stories of people who, you know, have found a job that they really like and that, that and we wanted to tell those stories visually on Instagram. So each each one of these stories we dedicated three slots on Instagram to. Um, if you look at you can look on your own phones at the uh, if you go to Instagram and, and pull up the monster feed, you can kind of see all these different little vignettes of people. Um, and I thought that this was an interesting one to talk about because, you know, Monster is, it's a website, you know, it doesn't really have a physical location or anything like that, but that doesn't mean that you can't find a narrative in there. Um, so this has been really exciting to work on. 
Um, the next project I'm going to talk about is uh, outside of the agency. Um, this is something that you guys know Zagat survey, the restaurant um, reviewing books. So we've been working with, or I've been working with them and with some friends of mine to tell their story, right? And their story is all about, we want to show you the best places to get food. We want to talk about that. So we set up little dinners for people in much in the same way that we did at the museum. We said, we're going to give people an exclusive experience and then we're going to pay them um, to, you know, tell that story. So we have one, one narrative arc is running on the uh, at Zagat feed, but then there's, an, there's accompanying narrative arcs that kind of interweave into this narrative that are living on, uh, on people's channels that have much more followers. So you know, we'll bring in people that have anywhere from 100,000 to a, mil a million followers and say, we want, we want to work with you. We, want to, you know, we have a budget to pay you. Um, come give us your personal perspective. And we're pretty hands off. You know, we want people to be honest and authentic to their own brand and feed, um, but while kind of interweaving that story into uh, into the the brand identity as well. And this is another one that you can just you know check on your feed. If you if you if you cruise this hashtag, you'll see all the different people that we're working with, and and there are different takes on the same places. And it's really interesting to have, you know, ten to twelve people all telling a story from a different perspective. I think that's a really interesting way to to uh, tell a story. Uh, another brand that is, I, I'm sure some of you are familiar with this next one. Does anybody here follow NY on Air? Yeah. So this is such a, this is a great success story. This isn't, this isn't a project that I organize, but I, I am a participant in it. Um, so Vin Farrell and uh, some people, he reached out to NY on Air and, and basically pitched this idea that was, we have, he knows, he knows people that have a lot of followers on Instagram. This helicopter company is an image licensing company. So he basically part, he paired people up with them and said, hey, you know, you can go on a flight over to New York and get some incredible images if you, you know, you tell who you flew with and you give them content. So it's, it's a very similar model to, to Empty Met and to all these other projects, which is embrace the creative community, um, offer them some incentive, and then you can really, uh, you can see some astronomical growth on this platform. I think that they got like, I mean, I know they're up to like maybe, anyone want to fact check me, but I think it's like over 300,000 followers on Instagram. Um, and this is all just in a very, very short amount of time. Like maybe, I don't think it's more than a year. Um, so this, this is a really fascinating example. Um, just in the interest of sharing some of my tips with you guys, um, the first thing I'll say before I get into these specifically is People always ask me, they're like, what are the best practices? What are the rules of social media? Like, how should I interact and engage with people? And, you know, I've given a lot of thought to this. And really what I've kind of landed on is we don't need to rewrite the rules of social interaction. We all kind of have that innately in us. You know, you, if somebody asks you a question on the street, you acknowledge their presence. You, you answer them. If somebody gives you a compliment, you don't just walk away. Um, so it's... We don't need to rewrite the rules of social engagement. I think that we just need to translate them for this medium. So what that means is, is just be a normal social human being, um, but you, know, you can do that online. So if somebody asks me a question or somebody you know, says, oh, I like that picture, I'll always, you know, try, I try to call them by name if I can find their name on their profile. Um, it's like making eye contact with somebody, right? You, you really, social media is, is not, you know, it's not a, well, social media is new, but being social is not. So just, just be yourself, I think, online. And, uh, and don't ignore the people that, that follow you. And, and you re really should engage with them and try to answer everything that they bring to you. Um, so some key points here. And, and this kind of goes back and forth between individuals and brands. I think they work for both. Um, Instagram is still largely a subscription-based, highly visual editorial platform. So nobody has to follow you, right? Um, but you need to, you don't want to show people something that they're not expecting. You don't want to break those expectations. Um, it's like having, you know, if you subscribe to a magazine and it comes and there's, it's full of the content that you're not expecting, you might cancel your subscription. That's like losing a follower. Um, what are you offering people in exchange for their time? You know, people have a really busy social media life and you got to really stand out. Um, 
it's not hard to convince your friends to follow you, but for a brand, it's a harder sell to a demographic who's wary of advertising. Uh, there is also uh, an ecosystem of highly followed influencers in the community. Um, as a brand, hiring these content creators who have massive reach built in can be an efficiency. You can buy content and distribution from the same source. Um, and funneling your messages through these advocates makes it more palatable to a community that is you know, oversaturated in advertising. So you know, Instagram is such an incredible creative community. Um, it's surfacing all sorts of different artists. Um, tap into the people who really understand the platform, and I think that that's the best way to, to grow and find success. Um, the takeaway, I would say, yeah, you know, work closely with connected creatives who have proven their, proven their success. If you are an individual, follow the people who inspire you and take your cues from how they use the platform. If you are a brand, hire these creatives to create content that fits the platform and to amplify your brand narrative. We live in an age of unprecedented visual literacy, and so associate yourself with those who are fluent. Um, so that, that's the end of my slides, but just to speak a little bit to this, this last part, it, I've met more incredible creative people by using Instagram, you know, just like you were saying, where pe people would show you around the country and show you all these watering holes, and it's such an incredible environment. Um, I don't think a feedback loop like this has really ever existed, where you can consume hundreds and hundreds of pieces of content every day, and then immediately turn around and you know put your own uh, your own efforts out there into the world, and immediately know whether or not it's resonating with the people that follow you. So take advantage of that. Surround yourself with people who inspire you, um, and I think that that's just the way to find success on Instagram.